Who do I have in front of me at all? Molly Beckett. Molly Beckett. And Molly, where were you born? I was born in Sea Mount in Courtown. In Courtown. And what was your mother and father's name? Mary and Billy Dunnigan. Dunnigan. Mary and Billy Dunnigan. And was there many brothers and sisters? I had five brothers and four sisters. Five brothers and four sisters. So you were a Dunnigan before you were married? Yeah. And tell me this, where did the Dunningans come from? Where did the name come from? They came from Bear Island in Cork. And my great-grandfather and a friend of his decided that uh, there wasn't anything doing for, with them at the time. And they got a punt and the two of them got into the punt and they rode in the punt for six weeks. And they stopped off at different areas overnight and probably spent a day or two in it. But they ended up coming in to the old bar in Courtown. And they walked through the woods and up into Tara Hill. And they met somebody that befriended them in Tara Hill. And they decided to stay there. And my great-grandfather Dunnigan built a house there. And it's still there. And he married a woman from Tara Hill. And my grandfather then, which was his son, and he had a daughter called uh, May and a daughter called uh, Betty. But we don't really know a lot about them. Uh, but my grandfather, Dunnigan, he came to live in Courtown and he married my granny who was a, spit, a, a smith from Seamount and uh, they built their own house in Seamount, a uh, little cottage it was. Now the one up in Tara Hill was a little um, touch cottage, very small little thing, whitewash and it's sitting right on the bank. And there's holiday makers has bought it and they come every year to it as far as I know now. Still sad. But my grandfather Dunnigan worked for Lord Courtown. And Lord Courtown had uh, used to have some sort of a business down there where the chicken farm is at the moment. You know where that is? And they used to sell, sell bits and pieces in it. And my grandfather, if you took the money and then you'd go to the uh, Lord Courtham's house to give him what you had taken, you had to wash the money before he would accept it. So you had a bowl and the money was put into the bowl and it was washed before Lord Courtham accepted the money from his employees. And he had two stewards and when he wanted uh, to have a walk on the sea, uh, on their beach, that would be done by the old bar. When he wanted to walk and have a walk there, he would tell the stewards what time he was going and they would have to go down and make sure that there was nobody on the beach when he arrived because nobody was allowed to walk where he was walking. Jesus. And that came from my grandfather Dunnigan. The man who sailed up from in a punt? No, that was my great grandfather. It was my great grandfather that got to put it on the punt. And as far as we know, there's still Dunnigan's left in car. And Bear Island, or Bear Island. Yeah, but I haven't been now. I've been in a lot of places, but I am. I was in Cork, all right. My sister, my sister comes from England every year, and we usually visit, go for a week away. The, her and the husband comes, and myself and Jack, my husband, and we go away for a week. She comes for a fortnight, so we have done nearly every county in Ireland. Yeah, and tell me this: what what are we talking? Your great grandfather, and what do you have dates? No. 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 You're tracking down though. You're talking eighteen hundreds, late eighteen hundreds. Oh yeah. No, I have no I have no dates, no. No. And the other 
So were they just young lads out for a bit, bit of adventure? Or? Apparently they were in their early 20s. Yeah. And the two rolled in a punt. Now, it's interesting the way things carry on. Your brother, your late brother. Yeah. He did something similar, didn't he? He did. And my father was a fisherman. And my father travelled the world fishing. And ended up in New York and spent five years in it. And the five years between my, el my, my brother and myself, because that's where he was. Yeah. And he worked on the docks and he had an accident and he lost two fingers. And he was put out in New York, he was deported because he took the compensation. And he come home and in the meantime, my granny Davis, who was my mother's mother, was looking after two, two boys, which was John and Tom, because he had John and Tom before he skipped it to America. As my granny Davis used to say, only he lost his fingers, you'd have never seen him the more. So he left two chaps behind him and went yes, off to America? Yes, I went to America. Then he came back home then? When he was deported. Okay, all right. Yeah. And uh, my granny Davis was looking after the, my mother and the two boys. Yeah. And then when he come home, he bought a little cottage in Seamount from John Bulger's grandfather, that used to have the hotel, Bulger's at the hotel. And he levelled it and he built a two-storey, which is still there. And uh, then uh, I was the next one born after that. I, that was... I think he was home 10 months when I arrived. And where was your mother? My mother was there in the house with the two boys. She, he went she off. never worked yeah. from the time that... Because my grandfather, Davis, was a fishmonger and uh, had his own business. And he used to go and bring the shopping to my mother and bring it down to the house every Friday. So he fed the family. Because my father was fishing had when he came home, and of course the money wasn't great with the fishing, and in the winter they done very little, and my grandfather Davis kept the family, he used to go and bring bags of flour and whatever, and uh, really my granny and grandfather Davis reared us all, yeah, in a sense like. That was common enough. That a People went off to work and they'd leave the children behind. Yeah. Like, some families. Yeah. Know, yeah. Families, well, yeah. Yeah, my grandfather Davis used to go out in the morning and even when I lived there, uh, the pony or the, or the horse used to be down in, in the chapel meadow and you'd get up at six and you'd go down and get the horse, bring it up to the garage. You had the garage up uh, where uh, this house is built in River Chapel now. And you'd yoke the horse up and put the boxes of fish into the back and bring it down to the door and he'd come out and get in and go off at half seven or eight, seven o'clock to sell his fish. And where would he travel selling the fish? He used to go up around uh, um, Kalena, um, Balakanu, all that area as far as, you know. Now, he gave his biggest customers was Church of Ireland people because his name was Davis mm -hmm. and they thought that he was one of them. So when he came home in the evening, you'd have to uh, unload the cart because there'd be everything and anything in it, eggs and all sorts of vegetables and meat and all that they used to give him, his uh, friends. And uh, Actually, my granny Davis ended up feeding a lot of people in River Chapel Street because there was very poor people. Yes. And Mrs. Kane, who lived across the road from her, and I can still see what happened. I was in the house. We always had our tea at half past four. And Mrs. Kane would come across the road at half past four with a plate and two slices of bread to be buttered for her husband's tea. And the woman two, two doors up, and her name was, um, oh, 
can't think of it now, Turner. And she used to come across around five o'clock and take the tea leaves that we had used for our tea. And she'd go back then and make her tea with the tea leaves. Operators. Very, very poor. Now, my Granny Davis, we were very lucky, which, and there wasn't too many of us, but we were lucky because my grandfather had his own little business. And he was dealing with the right people with his fish. The fish used to come in from Dublin on the train sometimes if it wasn't caught down in Courtown. Mm. Uh, come in on the train and he'd go in in the morning and take the fish off of the train and go ahead off and sell it. But the, the people that the, the was living there, they were very, very poor. Very poor people. And miss and I I lived you see I I lived with my Granny Davis and we never wanted for anything no more than my mother. And she didn't. Uh, my mother's family was reared. We were all reared by my Granny Davis, because my father couldn't supply the money, mm -hmm. not to rear ten. You know, so. You were saying there was one one child that was reared somewhere else. Was that right? No, it was only me. I was reared. No, the right. others was no. Right. We lost two girls. We was, lost one girl. Uh, she was only five months. And then uh, my sister Nancy, she died with meningitis at sixteen. And, uh, and then the rest of us, you know, but the Granny Davis were wonderful people. Granny Grandford Davis. Now I'll tell you a story about my grandfather Davis. When he died, uh, the all the people, uh, wardens and all them, came to the funeral. Came uh, uh, to the house. Mm -hmm. the The corpse was being removed from the house at three o'clock in the afternoon. And Warren came in and he said to Granny Davis, "The hearse is pointing the wrong way." And she said, no. She said, it's not. Did you not know that Tom was a Catholic? And they walked out, and there was quite a big crowd of them outside. And they left. Never went to the funeral. Because they never knew that he was a Catholic. They treated him as one of his own. And that is why my granny and grandfather done so well. Because he was being treated by one of them. And they were all well to do people. Had farms and, you know, all had businesses. Yeah. What, what are we talking? 1940s? 50s? What? When that incident happened. Well, I was 14 when my grandfather Davis died. And I'm 87 now. Because the night that he died, I had to walk down three o'clock in the morning, walk from the River Chapel down to um, Whelan's, you know where Whelan's pub used to be? Mm -hmm. For a lend of two candles, blessed candles to put beside the, beside the, because they were, they were waking up, going to wake him. And at three o'clock, I was 14, and I walked to Court Town to get the candles. And I walked then over from um, Whelan's to Seaman to tell my mother and father the grandfather had died. And we all went back to the River Chapel. So if you were born, you were, you were 87 now, so you were born in 1934. 34. So you're talking 1948 then, to yeah. take that into the yeah. 40s. Yeah, yeah those, those days have changed, haven't they? Well, yeah. Yeah. certainly have changed. Yeah. No. God. So well, I'll tell you another thing about Granny Davis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and where did the are there many Davis family Davis around now? No. They're gone. No. Did they go to the grandfather? Did that name die out there? Uh, yeah, it died out there when my Granny Davis died and my grandfather Davis. There was no he was a Wickler man. Okay. He was a Wickler man and my Granny Davis had a boarding house in, in Liverpool. And the lads used to come off of the ships. And they'd go and spend the night before they'd go out, you know, again. And 
uh, that's how she met my grandfather Davis. And then... Uh, Where was she from? She, she was from um, River Chapel. Awesome. Her mother, she was an O'Brien. Okay. And her mother and father is buried in the old cemetery in River Chapel. One, one by the National School? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're buried there. And, uh, but she went to uh, Liverpool, Gaston, a uh, place in, in Liverpool called Gaston, and she had a boarding house. And uh, she only dealt with the lads coming off of the ships. And she got to know them all, like, you know. And uh, my mother and uh, all my aunts and uncles were all born in Liverpool. Okay. And my mother, who was born in Liverpool and lived in Liverpool, met my father because he was the one that came off of the ship. Mm-hmm. And she, she ended up marrying him. And then they came, to, they came back and uh, my, grandpa, my granny came back to, to live and uh, her mother died and uh, they had the house and they came back to live there. And at one stage uh, she ran the Onivara Hotel, or not the Onivara, the Bayview Hotel. Yeah. Uh, there was a man from a car new owned it at that time. Yes. And she went in and she ran that for the hotel for three or four years yeah. when she came back from England. So. Yeah. So the Davis name went there. And where, your, your, your granny and granddad Davis, they're buried up in Ardemine here, I'd say, are they? They're in Ardemine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're buried in yeah. Ardemine. Yeah. yeah. They're all, and, and uh, the, the Dunnigans, they're all in Ardemine. Yeah. Yeah. Inter- interesting. So there's a, a mix of people coming in, different people coming in at different stages. The Davis from Wicklow, Dunnigan from, yeah. from Cork. Yeah. 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 And tell me this, with that, 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 that fish business, did that, did that go when your grandfather passed away? Yeah. 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 yeah it, fin- it finished actually a while before he, he, he was, yeah. uh, he was 70, he was in his 70s, I can't yeah. remember exactly, he was in his 70s. So he had given that up. Uh, a, few, a couple of years before, and nobody actually took it on. Yeah, yeah. you know. And that's interesting that we're actually getting fish from Dublin and sending that, moving that on. Yeah. Um, and I suppose fishing locally, they would be only catching herons. Come that's all. That's all. October you see, in 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 that time, there was they only fished for herons. They didn't yeah. fish for anything else. Yeah. And my father had the boat, and he used to fish. Yeah. The boat was called Mary Ellen, and uh, uh, he only. But in the winter, you see. He, he, there was nothing. He'd get the dole, and I think the dole that time was eight shillings. Yeah. So it wouldn't feed ten, yeah. like, you know. And was there, was there a social welfare back then? The yeah, he used to go, to go to go around a bike. Right. And the problem was, uh, sometimes he didn't bring no dole home, because he went into the... Uh, the pub went in, the in, into the pub at the bottom of the town. And he didn't bring the door home. And that's when the beer would be roused. And, and my mother was a very, very soft woman. I'd have thrown him out before she did, but she was very soft, very quiet, very passive type woman. But my Granny Davis used to be giving out about him, you know, uh, uh, this, uh, with him. But when they when they done the fishing, they used to go into Whelan's every Friday night and they used to do the payout in Whelan's on a Friday night. Where's Whelan's can I ask? No, that's the, it's the 19th. Okay. It was the 19th, yeah. And uh, that's where they done the, the thing, and he got three shares. And Joe Sinnott was with him, and Tom Turner, and uh, one of the um, Sinnott's, Paddy Sinnott, I think. The four of them fished, he had the three of them, and he got three shares. He got one for himself, uh, one for the uh, boat, and one for the nets. All oh, right. <laughs> so okay. well, he done well, didn't he? Yeah. So yeah. he done well when they were, when they were fishing, like. Yeah, yeah. He done well. Yeah. And uh, but he went to the Tara Bar every night, and uh, he'd go out at ten o'clock, and he'd come back at eleven. Right, right up to the time he died. You'd only go for an hour? Yeah, only went for, for an hour. Oh, all right. And Joe Sinnott would meet him there and Tom Turner would meet him there. Yeah. And the three of them sat in the same place every night. And in the summer, 
when the BPA visitor is around, the barman would say, you can't sit at them three seats there for the locals. So they weren't allowed to sit there. That's lovely. Yeah. And was that, is, that, is that bar still there? Yeah, it's, it's um, the old bar, at, um, the Tara bar, opposite, down next to the um, old ballroom. Okay. It's actually Dial. Dial of um, Ballygarra homes. Okay, okay. He's doing the hope. Okay. It's going to be opened, I think. Yeah. It's done a big job on it. Wow. Yeah. So that's in that, that so the, they went down for their... They went, out, they went out, Jan, went out at 10 o'clock. You could actually set your watch by them. And when we came home in, uh, about my Granny Davis too, my Granny Davis had what they call a safe house. And uh, the, when they when they come in, when the English had come into the street, she had a picture on the wall. And it was a double picture. One side had flowers on it, and the other side had the queen set. So when they arrived in the village, the, the black and tans or whatever, you, the English, she switched the pitch picture around. So because when they arrived, they actually came into every house. And if you couldn't let them in, they broke the door down. Yeah. And the picture was always twisted over. And as soon as they see the queen, the queen, there's no problem with her. Now there was two of them came o came in one night because there was two lads come up from Minnesota and they used to come across the fields, like you know when you come down from Ballacanew, and instead there's the field and you you go across and it comes used to come out at the back of the houses, so to come across the field, they they um uh, they come down and they were in the house and apparently they had been followed. And of course, the two uh, the English crowd followed him. My granny took the two boys in, rushed them upstairs, and put them into the bed. Put my aunt Nan and my mother, the only young lassies, on top of them. Covered them up, and the uh, two boys, the English cops or whatever, came in, went in, and she said, oh, "Do you want do you want to have a look?" She says in the bed. She said. The two girls said, don't disturb them, they've got uh, scarlet fever. And they turned on their heel and they went. And went out. And the two boys was on. Stopped the night. Now, they had, she had, for the, for the horse, uh, she had, um, they had a little stable outside in the, in the garden. And they had a uh, cellar in it. And... They used to, when they'd come in across at night, she used to put them down there, the lads. And there was two firms in it. It was there when the house was knocked down. Two firms. And all their names that had been in it were all on the wall. Was not. Yeah. Yeah. She had two firms and she used to have, there was blankets and all there. And they used to come and, and uh, they'd be put there. But the uh, trap door would be open and they'd be put down yeah. into it. And then the hay and all would be thrown all over, and the horse would be, even if the horse was in the field, the horse would be brought back to go on to there. Stay on top of the trap door? Yeah. On top of the cellar? On top of the cellar. And she the food and all would be sent down. She had, uh, and on the back of the wall, there was two ventilators, for because you see they were underground, in the cellar. Yeah. And there was two big ventilators. And that had two trees right next to the wall, covering the bike, ventilators. You couldn't even see where they were. Uh, where was this location, tell me exactly? Well, it's up, you know where uh, Jimmy's is? Yeah. The house next door. That was where it was. Only it was a, cot a, a attached cottage. And could I've seen the old photographs of the, that row of houses there. Yeah. So you probably, if you, I could probably see it in that now if I looked. You probably, oh yeah, you would. Yeah. And yeah. At the back of that house. There and there's a little uh, white wall, to uh, wall around it. It's a touch cottage and it's a little wall. There's a very small garden. Uh, and white, a uh, whitewashed touch cottage, that's what it was. And the cellar was at the back of that. And the cellar was at the back. 
there was a, a garage, uh, well, a building at the back, because she kept visitors as well. And she had built an extension at the back mm -hmm. for, uh, and she had made three bedrooms out there in, on the extension. And she had, they had built on onto that for, for um, the, uh, where the cellar was. Mm -hmm. And tell me this, did you see the writing for the lads? Yeah. 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 What, what, yeah. What, what, what was it written with? Was it scrubbed in with a knife or what was that? No, it was, all, it was written, a uh, lot of it was written in pencil. Not pen now, pencil. pencil. But a lot of it was done in, like, if they'd got a knife. And they had, you know, just done it with a knife. Do you remember any names? No, I can't remember because I wasn't that old. Yeah. But I, I, I can't remember, I'd say it was probably only about, well, uh, maybe ten, nine or ten when... when Early 40, mid 40s. Yeah, when, when it was levelled. I mean, oh. I wasn't there when that was all going on. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But uh, uh, after we, we, uh, le we levelled the, uh, the back. Yeah. And uh, my cousin, um, she actually built a... a, a the house that's on it now, she yeah. built. And was the cellar purposely built to hide the... Yeah, it was, it was, it was more, uh, I think, a dig out. Yeah. Where they had dug it out because she, she had a safe house. Yeah. But she is on the records in, in Dublin. And the, 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 the military... Of, of uh, yeah. they have a name the for it. The witness statements are... Yeah, they have, and they have a name for it, yeah. she, she, what, what they called her. And the other safe house in River Chapel. And what was her name again? That was Mrs. Davis. Mrs. Davis. Yeah. The, oh, Annie Davis. Annie Davis. Yeah. Uh, she was uh, something the mom. Coming the mom? Yeah, something like that. And she's down, she's down for that. Okay. And the other safe house was uh, Martin Remnant's granny. She had a safe house as well. And she had a, a, an, an, an thing under where she kept the cows. She had an opening for, and then they went in where the, and the cows was on the on the top, because they had little farm the uh, remnants there on the on the corner coming down the hill. And oh, that remnants where they used to have a little electrical. That where is this? No, it's in River Chapel there. It's um. Actually, it's it, it's just up there. Yeah. Yeah, it's backing on to these houses, remnants. Remnants. Yeah. And who's there now with that? Location well, I, I don't know whether, I think Johnny Revenant owns it, okay. because the, the daughter has the garage across the road, she has hairdressers in it. Okay, and what was the Revenant man and woman's name again? Did they say it well, I don't know what Mrs. Revenant's name was, but I know that she had a son called Patrick, okay. and the other son was called Joe, okay. Joseph. And their safe house was another, another yeah. dug out cellar type yeah. thing. Yeah, and that was under the cattle, under where she had the cattle. Oh, right. Yeah, that was the safe house as well. Yeah. And when the picture frame was turned around for the, when the tans had arrived, that was in your grandmother's house as yeah. well? Yeah, yeah. And did she let it be seen that there was a picture of the queen? Oh, yeah, she said, yeah. Not yeah. The door. yeah. And, 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 and she had a little hallway, and a very small hallway. And yeah, there was a, a glass door and you step down the step into the living room because there's no such thing as sitting rooms or anything. It was a living room and the range was in the, you know. Yeah. And when you stepped down, you could see the, the picture was right in front of you. Yeah, that's great. So as the, when they came in, the, the first thing they spotted was the Queen's head on yeah. the picture. Yeah. And the other stories like that with the Tans, did the Tans raid any other houses around here or...? Oh no, they done them all. Yeah. Oh, they were brutal people. The English were brutal people at that time. They get they kept the uh, um, into the in the River Chapel. They were brutal people uh, 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 because they were looking for the um, well the Irish soldier, whatever you like to call him. The IRA. The IRA. Yeah. 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 And did you ever? hear any names oh, these are all in records anyway but just just growing up like I know that my own grandmother's first cousin Joe Quinty was captain of the IRA in Cumberbridge Company so you know all the names are there now we, we know who they are Hubert Hague um, so surely it was 
Was there a Jack Bulger involved in here? Was there a band called Jack Bulger? Did you know him? Well, there was Bulgers. Yeah. There was Bulgers. Uh, uh, Bulgers, uh, they called it Pig Bank. And that was across the river, Bulgers. Um, but I wouldn't... I, I, I remember uh, old Mrs. Bulger. And then uh, there was Dick Bulger. He was a son. He went to live in Ballygarris. I think he married a girl from Ballygarris. Yeah, that's the yeah. Um, and uh, there was Tom Bulger. I, I can't really remember now. Yeah. There was a big family on him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know Granny's grandmother was a Bulger, and she had some relation. Bulger River Chapel was involved in the war in in, in, in that time. Yeah. Um, interesting now, but and so come here. So. I'm trying, trying to figure out your, your, the Davis family name died, died away, the business, that business went away then as well. How many brothers and sisters do you have again? You said you'd have. Uh, I had, I had, I, I, there was John, Tom, Pat, Liam, and Peter. Yeah. That was five. Yeah. And it was myself and Lily and Nancy and um, Elizabeth yeah. that died. Okay. Two died. Yeah. And then you were, you went to school locally? Yeah, I went to school in River Chapel. Yeah. What time did you, what age did you finish at? I finished at 14 and went to work. Yeah. And went into the Owlert Hotel and... Uh, the, what was it, what's it called, the Owlert? The Owlert, uh, well, the Owlert, yeah, it was bought, uh, the um, tourist board owned it. it and they brought the women in to train them how to deal with hotels. So you were trained to be a waitress or a cook or whatever. I went in as a waitress and the waitress was... Uh, showed uh, they were called um, silver service waitresses that's what we were called you had to you had to learn how to be a silver service waitress but you, you had to deal with the silver that was and how to lay it out on the table and all that sort of thing and then when i done my training there i went in and i uh, worked in the marine hotel for a couple of years and then I went to England. For what? I, I, I worked in Dublin for a while as well, a couple of years, in South Secular Road. And uh, I got a bit fed up of that. And uh, I went to England then. My cousin was, I had two cousins over there and I went to live with them. What, what are we talking? 19, late 1950s? I 60s. was, I think I was, I, I know I had my 21st birthday in England, so I think it was about 19 or around that when I went to England. So 19, and then we were born in 1930? Yeah, 34. 34. Around 1952? Yeah. Right? Yeah, I thought it'd be about right, because I got married there in 1957. Okay. 1957. Okay. And I had 25 year there. And I was um, a seamstress in Marx and Spencer's. Right. I learned to be a seamstress and uh, I done made all the clothes and for Marx and Spencer's. And as well as that, I became a convener for the union. And I worked with the union and uh, I loved I loved it. Yeah. Done a lot of work with the union. And you know, I could be called out at three o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. if there was a dispute somewhere and the taxi would bring me to wherever I was going to settle the dispute and uh, got great money for it and uh, my mother and father then became old and I decided that in 1976 I'd come home mm -hmm. and uh, I had made me money in England and mm -hmm. my husband had as well, he was uh, he worked for um, a ball bearings factory. Yeah. So I made the money and come home and uh, bought a little house in Cement and then had my house gone and never had a mortgage. Oh. I, I made my money in England. Yeah. I will have to say I made my money in England. Yeah. But I loved the work that I'd done and I, I, I met some beautiful people yeah. and some lo lovely English people. Yeah. I still uh, contact them and actually they came over and had a, a week with me like with summer and that. Yeah. And... Uh, I met some lovely people. Where were you in England? I was in Nottingham. Oh yeah. 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 I was in Nottingham, yeah. 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 But uh, I had... Um, I, I really enjoyed the work. Yeah. 
and uh, I, I enjoyed the union more than anything yeah, because yeah. Uh, I was free. Yeah. You know, and uh, even though I'd be working and I'd be brought uh, asked to leave, and that's the company, Marks and Spencer, still had to pay me. Yeah. Even though I could be out all night or I could be out all day. Yeah. And uh, but I, I still had to be paid by them, and I also was paid by the union. Yeah. So you came back here in nineteen. That's a good way to go too. I came back in nineteen seventy six. Yeah. Yeah. Back back here then. Yeah. 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 Never, never want to go back. Did you ever think about going back? No, I well, uh, up till the last couple of years, uh, I've been going back probably three or four times a year. Yeah. You know, my and sister's still my sister and my daughter. She's over there now. Yes. Even though they, they, I brought. I mean, I had two of them: the uh, boy and a girl, Paul and uh, Eileen. And uh, Paul stopped, but Eileen. She found that she wasn't getting the work that she wanted and uh, she decided to go back and live with my sister. And she got married over there and now she has two daughters. Ooh. And fully part about it, she's in the same position now as I was. She runs the union. And she has a great job with them. Yeah. You know? So she's actually she's hopefully she's coming the first of August for the two girls. And how do you think you do, do, do you ever consider how you got the job in the union? Are you a good talker or are you? Well, I was working. You see, um, I was working in the clothes, uh, making clothes, at the factory, and I was a machinist there. Yeah. And uh, we the girls we were weren't we were paid on what we'd done. Not on, um, you know, depending on what went out. And the girls kept saying to me, yeah, we, we should do something about it. Like, we, we're here all day and there's some days uh, if the work don't come to us, we don't do it, you know, and we're not getting the money. And they just said to me, would you like to go in like and see if there's anything we can do? So I said to him, well, I don't mind. And his, his name, the manager, was Mr. Pugh. So I went in and I sat with him and said to him we weren't satisfied and about it and all and he said well there's nothing you can do about it if you want a job you've got to deal with it and that and when I was coming out of the office there was this man going in and uh, he, he, he said something to me and he was a union man uh, of, uh, uh, for um, clothing, uh, whatever they call it, I can't remember now. And I said to him, can I have a little chat with you? And he said, yeah. He says, uh, come outside. He says, can you come outside? And I said, well, but I can or not, I will. So I went out and told him the position we were in and that we weren't getting the money. We, because uh, if, the, if the stuff didn't come to us, we couldn't put it on the machines. There were big industrial machines, you know, and there was... Um, you put it on and it went to the next one, you know, it's all around. So he said, leave it with me. He said, would you be interested? He says, in looking after it. And I said, yeah, well, I'm all right. So the next day I got a call to, to would I go to, uh, out to, um, uh, oh, one of the other places anyway. Hitway, Hutway. Uh, and I, a taxi was brought in and I was put into the taxi and brought both ways and into the office to meet these union men. So we sat down and we talked and they said, that, would you like to take the job? And I said, yeah, take it all right. So I went away and was trained and uh, away for a week and got trained and had the best of a time in a five star hotel and uh, got the job. And Mr. Pugh, <laughs> if there was anything going wrong, he used to say, Molly, come over here. And I'd go in and Mr. Pugh, <laughs> I'd open the door, knock on the door of his office and he'd, I'd, he'd say, come in. And, and he'd say, oh, not you again. <laughs> he used to hate me seeing me going in. <laughs> 
And then when we'd have a discussion, he used to say, yeah, come on, have a, tea, a cup of tea and a biscuit. And we yeah. used to sit down and have a cup of tea and a yeah, biscuit. Yeah, over the, you know. That's job done. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. And did you carry, did you carry on working when you moved home? You had children, I'd say, did you? You had two children. Yeah, I had two children. Yeah, they went to go to school. Yeah. And uh, for a couple of years, they were only for the last couple of years. Yeah. I went and uh, I went into the post office for a while down there but uh, I didn't I didn't stop that long in it and then I went into and uh, ran the bar in um, where Jimmy uh, uh, where the um, Helen Brennan had the uh, pub yeah. in the t in the middle of the, co of the town yeah. shipyard it is now yeah. <coughs> I went in there and I ran that for maybe four or five years. Yeah. And uh, then I went off to America for a while. Did you? Yeah, I went to America twice. And uh, I had a brother in America. Right. So I went and spent a bit of time. I toured America, myself and Jack. Jack took early retirement from that. He worked in the fert when he came. He got, walked straight into a job in the fert. Yeah. Because when we used to come home in the summer, we used to go out for a drink and, <coughs> excuse me, we ended up, uh, we used to drink with my brother and his wife and the manager of the fert. And of course, as soon as we came home, he said, do you want a job, Jack? And Jack went straight into the job in the fert. And uh, he took redundancy early and we toured America. And then we came home and then we went back again in uh, 1990 went back and spent another bit of time out there. So we enjoyed ourselves. Yeah. Do you, have you seen many changes over Gordon since you were Oh yeah, a lot. A lot of changes. A lot of changes. It, it's the people is the people is not the same as the war. Diff, you're you're dealing with different characters. You know, when in my time Everybody looked after a granets, you know, uh, and you knew everybody. And if there was trouble, the neighbour was always there. Mm -hmm. you ne your door was never locked. A key was never taken out of your door. It was never locked. And people looked after one another. Mm -hmm. And, <clears throat> I mean, if, if, you, if you didn't, I, I'd seen my mother doing it. Uh, an old woman across the road uh, when she was ended up on her own my mother used to go and bring her over a bit of dinner you know and people looked after one another They're not, they don't do that anymore it's not the same you know I, I, I don't know what it is there's a lot of there's a lot of people that has no interest in anything only themselves and court time was never like that. Never like that. It was, we had good times in court time, though. Especially in the ballroom. I mean, you were out from three o'clock in the morning dancing. All the big bands and where would you get it? I mean, there's nothing like that, is there? We used to walk to Gory to the cinema. And get the lads in Gory following us out the road and having a laugh and when they get near us we'd walk and then we'd hang on until they came near us and <laughs> we used to have a great time in the cinema yeah. come down the street and go into and get the chips yeah. on the way home and walk down and and be watching how to come how to come <laughs> the Gory lads yeah. you know we had great times but the ballroom was fabulous it was a fabulous place. Some great, great bands, you know. What are we talking to ballroom? Are we talking the fifties? Yeah, well, you would be. You'd be. You'd be uh, before be the late forties. Late forties, yeah. Huh. Uh, used to have all the big bands in it. Joe Lass and all them were in it. He used to come from England. Yeah. And uh, uh, what they call him, uh, Donigan, What's his name? He was. He was in it. Uh, and he came from Cork. Uh, Larry, Lanny, oh, he was a great crooner, wasn't he? Lonnie Lonnie, no, not Lonnie. Bad Lonnie. Bad. Yeah. 
he came from Cork yeah. and uh, he, he used to come for the summer. He used to come in June and not go back until at the end of August. He used to stop in the, in the Tower of Eve. And when I went to England, he was uh, doing a, he was in a sketch in Nottingham. And I went and uh, went round the back and uh, we had a great, great time, great yeah. talk. Like, and we were talking about all the locals and, you know, he was asking about different people. And uh, he was there, uh, he was there for a week. So I was with him, we stopped together for the week that we were there. And uh, he'd, he'd done a great show in, in uh, Nottingham that time. Wow. Yeah. And uh, he didn't come back to Cork, he died, he died in England. Wow. Yeah, he got married and, and he died there. But he, he, was, he was a fabulous singer, yeah. fabulous singer he was. Do you, do, you, I know you, did you, do you sing yourself at all? Or were you interested in any of the old ballads at all? Or do you well, song? I was a singer and I sang in England in bands. And I went uh, to RTE and I'd done a couple of jigs in RTE uh, singing. What kind of songs were you singing? Were you singing the old ballads or were you no, singing No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a soprano. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I done it in Eng England, went in several competi competitions there and uh, singing like. And I sang in the choir here for years as well. And, um, but didn't pursue it yeah. really. Well, I should have done, but I didn't. Yeah. But uh, Dr. Connolly, he was a doctor in Gorey at the time. And uh, I was in a concert and he came to, to the next day and he said, uh, I think you should go and get a bit of training. And I said, where? And he said, RT. And he made the arrangements for me to go to RT. And I went and I had uh, a few sessions there on training. And it did do me good, all right. It, it showed me exactly how to use my voice. But I didn't, I didn't keep on. I should have done, but I didn't. Do you sing now? Not very often. Will, will, will you sing a bit for me now? You're on the front. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you won't. Oh, no, you won't. <laughs> Do you I, remember? Go on. I, 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 there's not much that I... A few bits that I, I used to sing at one time, all right, but... Um, what, what, what were they? Well, I was always very fond of... Um, of... Um, singer, uh, what the hell was his name? He was a great singer too. Can't think of his name now. My mind you see is not as active as it used to be. Um, what was the song? The song was Eileen. Oh yeah. And he used to sing that. How's, yeah. how's, oh, give me a little bit of that. Huh? Give me a little bit of that, will you? Well, I started off, now I'm not saying I'm going to because I couldn't tell you the last time we sang, I'll start it off for you. In a town on the shore, by the castle Donin, the fairest of all was the maiden Eileen. The bloom on her cheeks were as fresh as the dew, and her heart to a young Sailor laddie was true. At morn he would sail with the sun and the tide. At eve would return to his promised young bride. And down on the shore he could hear it so plain. His voice in the wind singing soft this refrain. <coughs> Eileen, my Eileen, oh wait for me, wait. I can't do it, me. I'm a, bit, a little bit hoarse, that's but that's 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 the type of sound that I got. Oh, that's lovely. I'm delighted you did that for me. Huh? I'm delighted you did that for me. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm a little hoarse, so at, at, I. I, I lost a few little notes there, I know. Right. I went a bit flat, but uh, I could feel it in my throat. I went a bit flat. You're not 16 anymore, sir. 
No, I'm not 16 anymore, is right, <laughs> you know. You're rude to me. Yeah, but yeah. another one I used to sing and used to go mad in England for it was yeah. Danny Bye. Oh, brilliant. As soon as I used to go in handing in and Danny Bye, they always used to be asking me, Good, go and sing Danny Bye. Yeah, sing, sing a bit of the chair, please. <laughs> no, no, I've done enough now. You've done enough. I've done enough because. No, a little, I'm a little bit hoarse, and no, I'm a little bit disinclined to think that because I should have been a little oh, bit higher. Like I should have been a little bit higher. I'll put you on the spot for you, so don't be making me wrong, right? <laughs> Come here to me, eh? Listen, I could talk to you for hours, and you're going to have time, to, you're going to have to go. Are you, are you under pressure for time? No. You're all right, no, friend. So come here, you came back here in nineteen in the seventies and you've been on and off. Nineteen seventy six, yeah. And you said you've seen ch- big changes in Gortown. One thing that struck me there today was huge difference between the Gortown and River Chapel people, apparently. Is there was there a divide? Uh, was there There was I think a little jealousy. Oh right. On I, his part. Well, I th- I think a little jealousy could have been on the River Chapel. Oh. Because you see, everything circled around Gortown. And I think there was a little bit there. Now, you see, Core Town was a very busy area. Yeah. And there was quite a few hotels in it. Yeah. You know, you had the Bayview. You had the Owlert. You had uh, the Onivara. You had the Core Town. You had the Tower of Ville. But there was no hotels in, nothing up here. So I think there was that little bit. of, And everything seemed to circle around Core Town. Not River Chapel. Because River Chapel only existed of the street. That was River Chapel. There was nothing else there. Yeah, and how did how did we get such a clear two places so close to each other? Like how how did a settlement form? Did did when when do you know was was it based around the the school the primary school or where, how did it how did it develop? So where was the post office? The post office was in the Harbour Street. Down on the, by the crossing the toilets there? No, no, no. no the post office was uh, where uh, next door to the 19th. Aye. Where there's the shop there. Uh, yeah. uh, Bubbles has it. Pat, yeah. Pat, uh, Pat Burnham has it. Yeah. That was the post office. That was the original post office. And then it moved and, and 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 Jimmy Jim Jim from Ballygarrett, what was his name? Jimmy Sinnott, Jim Sinnott. Yeah. He had the post office there. And when he died, because he he got drowned, he went out in the punt and it turned over, and he got drowned under the banks, at the at the uh, beyond the bridge. In, on a summer's day. And he was, Vida Sinnott didn't keep the post office on. And that's where Lily Dunbar came in. And she took it where it is now. Up to where it is now. Yeah. Now, that's as far as I can go with the post office. Yeah. Now, whether it was somewhere else before, yeah. I don't know. And... There was no church in court. That's the other thing as well. The settlement here was based around, there was a church. So you would have had the old church that was burnt down in 1798. That's right. There was a chapel. Yeah. Um, and then where, after that was burnt down, what chapel, when was it River Chapel then? Was it after that then? Um, the, the, it's up on the, on the thing in the chapel. Oh, the now that was built by voluntary. That river, that chapel, all the, the locals that actually worked in the brickyard, on the top of the brickyard hill, what they done was, when they got their money on a Friday, they bought so many bricks. And they brought them down there in cartloads. And they built that church. The people of River Chapel and Courtain built the church because and anyone that was working in any place. Now, Grandfather Clinican was working for the court towns. But when he got his money, he done the same as the rest of them. He went and bought so many bricks. And that church was built 
voluntary. Now, they did get somebody to do it. I don't know who the builder was. Yeah. But they, they didn't have to buy the bricks. The bricks was donated by the people of Corte and River Champion. That's fantastic. And who told you that story? Well, that story was told... Well, I, I don't know whether it's my granny Davis now or my father. But my father, I, I think my father had told because I think his father was in, involved in it. Yeah. Because it's very few, it's a brick, it's a brick to build it, made a brick. And the fishermen, the fishermen donated as well. They used to buy the bricks in the brickyard, and every brick to send that came from the top of the hill. And the top of the hill is on the brick factory on the way to Gorey. Yeah. On the right hand side there. Yeah, that's where the brick factory was. With Wexford, the, yeah, they say the Macklemore Clay. Yeah. yeah. And every brick to thin that came from there. And wasn't brought, bought in from anywhere. It came from up there. Okay. And they came out of that on carts. Assin carts and ponying carts. Oh, fantastic. Now that's that's up here with me and I, I, I didn't imagine it. I know, I know. You know. Yeah, it's lovely, it makes complete sense. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a great unit as well, isn't it, to buy to buy the bricks to be able to, to yeah. do that. Yeah. 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 And and the a lot of a lot of the statues was donated, and the big cross that used to hang down, but it's I think it's on the back now. That was donated by Colette O'Toole's father. Poor old Colette. You know Colette O'Toole, lived there up in Ireland Mine. Yeah. She she is, I think she originated from Ballygarrett. Or to uh, Clifford. What was her name before? Was it Keys? Not sure. I, I don't know the woman at all. Well, Clet, Clet's father, and Clet was born in the house in the house. Um, or did she leave? No. When she got married, she built the house opposite the cemetery in Ireland Mine. She married Seamus O'Toole from Gorey. Yeah. But she originated from Ballygarrett. Keys. I think it's Keys. Yeah, I've heard of them. It's, it's, it's I have a feeling yeah. that it's Keys. But all belong to her is in Ballygarrett. Mm -hmm. But her father donated that a magnificent cross to the church. Wow. So that could be why, because the church is, is River Chapel. Yeah. It is River Chapel, yeah. It is River Chapel, yeah. 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 See, it's not Courtham. No. See, Courtham would have been the, the estate for the landlord too, so the yes. there's a little bit of politics going on there yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 You see that in towns too. You see. Yeah. Except in towns. And all them houses, that seem you know where Seamount is. Yes, I do. Because there's little cottages in there going mm -hmm. up the road, mm -hmm. where the post office is. Yeah. Did it? All them houses were built for the workers from Bert, Major Richards. Major Richards built all them for his workers. Them little houses, them two rows of houses. Lovely. They were because Major Richards owned it, that land. And owned it all the land up. And who built the Red Row? Was that called Lord Courtham? Lord Courtham. For workers as well? For workers as well. And workers on, the, on his estate? Yeah. yeah. Well, they're red brick as well, aren't they? They are red brick as well, aren't they? Are they red brick? Red brick. Yeah, they're all red brick. Yeah. It's red yeah. 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 Well, you see, Courtown, Lord Courtown's land was a jardin to the brickyard. It was oh, all yeah. belonged to... Oh, yeah. And I, if I'm not mistaken, the brickyard could have been land belonged to Lord Courtown. Yeah. And were you ever told when that developed, was it... I've heard it was famine relief work. When the brickyard started, or the or bricks made out during the famine, time of the famine. I don't know. Oh, no. And did you ever hear about the base? And someone was telling me the, the, the base in Fortown was famine relief, or it was built by Lord Fortown. Yes, yeah. that was. And, 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 and yes, and my grandfather lost his son in it. Uh, uh, he, he uh, coming in after being out in the, in the boat, and it, it stood up, he stood up to do something. There used to be a gate in the middle. Uh, you know, called the overflow now, the steps going. Yeah. yeah. But used to be a gate there, 
and you had to do something to open the gate for to let the water come in to flush you into the harbour. Yeah. And he fell over and hit the wall and was drowned. But and Lord Court, that was Lord Court then. When did Lord Court, when did, when did they, when did they all leave? When was that? Well, <laughs> see, they did, they used to live in Marrowfield. They owned in Marrowfield mm -hmm. as well. Now, I don't have, <coughs> I don't have many of them is left. <coughs> but one of them, Patrick is his name, he's in, in the government in England. Yeah. Patrick. Because I, I said to Linda to, to try and contact Patrick about the woods. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they, they, they did get but they couldn't get in touch with him or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> yeah. That's interesting now. So there, 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 there has been a divide, I suppose, between River Chapel and Gordon for, for a while. Yeah, that's an interesting one. And you were, you were born in Gordon, is that right? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And you had the Tinker's Bed on Court Town. Oh, it was called the Tinker's Bed. And it's still there, and it's still called the Tinker's Bed. And it was an, a, a, an alcove in, in, the, in the field, you know, al alcove like that. The yeah. field was up on the top. And the Tinkers used to come once a week. The travellers, yeah? Yeah, and yeah. they used to go into that alcove. And if you had a saucepan that had a hole in it, you brought it up to the tinker's bed and they put the thing into it. Because we're trade that was fixing pots and pans yeah. and making pots and pans. Yeah. Lord. Because people couldn't afford to buy another pot. Oh, of course they couldn't. So they used to take, and, and that's why it's called the tinker's bed. Ah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. And what were the names? Can you remember any of the names of the travellers, the, the families? No, I, I can't remember. Were no. the cashes or the orange no. or the I, I, It'd be going back even probably before my time. Good Lord. Yeah, yeah. Plastic came along then, but, changed uh, the whole thing. Uh, but you see, it was always called the Tinker's Bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when, when plastic came, the whole thing changed. You yeah. wouldn't buy mass produced plastic yeah. and that yeah. fixing and mending yeah. didn't happen anymore, you know? Yeah. yeah. No. No. I was talking to a man there today, I was talking to Peter, uh, and he was saying about to me about how do you see them dip the nets years ago? Dipped them down, they just uh, dipped them in some kind of substance to coat them, the cotton nets, the old cotton nets. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hang off in a piece of gallon. Yeah, that's right, yeah. 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 Or oh, should the nets used to be hanging everywhere over at the far side? Yeah. And my father would come in at, uh, they'd go out at four o'clock mm -hmm. and they'd come in at eight o'clock, eight or, yeah, and you had to be there. Myself and poor Nancy, who died. She was always over there, and we had to shake the fish off of the nets yeah. while while they went to have something to eat. Yeah. My mother would be I'd had to have the tea ready, and you'd shake the nets. And the lads from Gory, the buyers, would be standing up on the wall waiting for the nets for the <laughs> fish fish to be shaken off of the nets. Did they have a name of the buyer, the buyers? Well, uh, what they call him he, uh, was a great man. He was always down there. Um, He's dead now. He used to walk the streets in Gory there. Can't think of his name. No, can't think of it. You used to tour three of them used to be coming down. You used to be down every night. Buying them. And you used to buy the fish. And when, when was buying the fish for the herdens in October they, or November? The herdens, the herdens. And they'd put them on the trains and send them to Dublin to the market. That's right. Fish market next morning. Oh. Did they call them jobbers? I don't know. They call the cattle dealer, cattle that's jobs. I, 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 I don't know. The, but I used to shake the fish, fish and say this, the this job we didn't like. Shake the nets. I had to shake, yeah. yeah. You had to go and do that and then you brought the, neck up on, the net up onto the grass and you paid it all out dry. for it to dry and be left there then. Yeah. My father would come back then and he'd do the deal with the buyer. Yeah, yeah. Did you like fish? No. Didn't like you know, you eat, eat herds, no? No. Oh, Lord, I'd love them. It's only one, one uh, well, Peter loved him. My brother Peter, he loved fish. And John liked fish. Lily don't he, uh, wouldn't touch fish. I wouldn't touch fish. Liam wouldn't touch fish. Tom wouldn't touch fish. 
Isn't it gas? I wouldn't. I, I'd have a job eating a fish finger. Yeah, we've seen too much of it. I know, I know. I yeah, know. we've seen too much of it. The fish should be left over. I'd be put into a barrel of salt in the yard. Yeah. And the next day, you'd be told, go and bring me in half a dozen them herns and I'll throw them on the grill. On the griddle as well, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. on the fire, on, on the, the griddle. Yeah. Yeah. And you salt the herns and you'd have them for Lent. Oh, yeah. 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 Be, be two, there'd be two barrels in the yard. Yeah. And it'd be full. Would it be a cap on the other barrels? Oh, yeah, it'd be a cap on them. Yeah. Oh, yes, it'd be a cap on And I tell you what they used to do as well. They used to have the rays. Yeah. Your father used to go for, out and he'd fish for rays. Yeah. And they used to bring them in put a, a cord on them and hang them on the line until it dried out. And it'd be every bloody blue bottle in the country, it'd be on them. <laughs> That's right. They'd be hanging in the yard on the bloody line. And the blue bottles would be, everything would be on them. And then my mother then would bring it in, throw it in, in, in the sink in water, skin it, and put it into the pan with uh, onion sliced onion and fry it. Now, my husband Jack, he was called Matt about it when my mother used to do it. He oh, thought it was fabulous. And and, and Lily's husband, my sister. And would it would it be a milk and flour with it as well? Oh no no, just fry it on, on with with uh, onion. Di- yes, diced onion. Oh. Yeah. He was Jack Jack always reckoned in, in, and the only one that could do anything with the ray was your mother. But the, the ray would be out maybe from the day before hanging that goddamn line. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What other, what other fish would it eat? Well, it'd be, it'd be mackerel. Yeah. It'd be another one that that did have. Yeah. Did it salt? Did it smoke mackerel at all? Or yeah, did it, eat, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, everything now that, uh, that wasn't sold was able to be uh, reserved, preserved. Yeah, preserved. And where did it preserved? Did, did you, did you, like my mother and all of them in Ballygarty, not Ballygarty in they were cooking on the open fire. Fifties until the gas cooker came along. So would, where would you put the fish up the chimney? Or yeah, well we were we were had an open fire as well. Yeah. There was a, a big open fire and a thing coming down and and, and used to hang the the hang the, 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 the pot on it. The kettle, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It'd be hanging out of out of out of the thing. Yeah. And where would you smoke the fish? Would you, would up, you in the, up in the, up, up the chimney. Up in the chimney. You'd head them yeah. going, would you? Yeah, and my Granny Davis used to keep pigs as well. Yeah. And uh, at the end of the year, a uh, lad used to come and kill the pig. Yeah. And it would go up into the chimney. Yeah. The two should uh, be sl- cut down the middle. Yeah. And the two sides would be put up the chimney. Up like that? Yeah. Yeah. And smoke them up there. And, it's not, and if you wanted the piece, you go and cook it off and throw it on the pan. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. If you wanted a rasher, mind the rashers that time with that thick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you want, go and cut a, cut a rasher and throw it on the pan. Will it have to be smoked for long? Well, I'd, I don't know now, but I'd say it would have to have a certain a certain amount of time. Yeah, yeah. To smoke it, like, you know. And do you, do you remember smoked mackerel as well? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. And then I remember Granny talking about putting the, the herons in the barrel salt in it. Oh, yeah. 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 Were they plastic or, or, were, or the ceramic? Were they clay pots or were they plastic? No, they, 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 were, they weren't plastic, but oh. they were sort of, and they weren't, they were sort of a tinny one. Okay. And they had a special lid on them. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah, yeah. People would, wouldn't eat meat on a Friday to be out. Oh, God, no. No. Oh, no. No, that, 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 was, that was a sin, that was. Yeah. You know, to eat meat on Friday. I heard the lads in Camuckridge talking, Joe Hamill talking about they used to, they'd saw the herns and they'd sell them then on, at Lint, the big market. Oh, yeah, there. yeah. Oh, yeah. There'd be two barns probably now in the down below in me, in my father's. And, Probably could be a barrel up in my gran- in my Granny Davis's, and uh, then uh, when Lent come, people would be looking for something, and they'd knock on the door and can have half a dozen her- half a dozen herns. Yeah. 
or a dozen herons, or but it was mostly half a dozen herons. Because people would have the money shots. Yeah, half a dozen herons. Did you ever hear them say one for the cat? <laughs> no, 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 they never heard that one, yeah. no. But sure. And would the herons in the pack, did, did, be, did we go to the head in, would they? Oh no! Hole. Oh no, they'd be going in hole. Oh no, they wouldn't be good at her, no. Wouldn't be good. No, no, you have to do that yourself. Be solid when you get them out. Solid? Solid. With the, with the, the, um, there'd be that much um, salt in them. Right. Be solid. And you'd have to throw them into something and let them sit for overnight yeah. to get the salt out of them. Yeah. And then you'd gut them and, and, and do what that to be done. Some, yeah, some people didn't take the head off them. Did you take the head off them? Oh yeah, we, yeah. the head was always taken off them. Yeah. Yeah. It's always yeah. taken off them. Yeah. And the ray was always taken out. They'd slit it and take the ray out, or the, or the um, what was the other thing? The dab, the, there was a ray in it, some of them, and, and there was another thing, and the ray was the one, the little balls. The pea. Uh, pea, yeah. Pea in the <coughs> Yeah, and the melt. They used to slit it and take take the pea and they melt out. And sometimes they fry it. Oh, it's just up here? Yeah. Okay, I, I, I love the pea now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, well, they used to throw the pea, pea t- slit it and yeah. take the pea out and throw it on the pan. Right, you eat them, uh, yeah. yeah. Do you remember years ago as well taking the, um, oh, jizz, the bladder, you throw it onto the fire as a child? Oh, oh the name escapes me now. We stood as children. You take it out, you throw it on the fire. Uh, do, uh, no, it's gone to my head. And it'd pop up like a balloon. Oh, Jesus. No, it was a bladder, but anyway, it was a nail. Yeah. Anyway, that's gas now with the fish. So, so, so people, you remember people, you do remember people coming for looking for fish. Oh, yeah, 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 half a dozen herons, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Huh. yeah. Well, do you ever see them not fishing on St. Martin's Eve, the 11th of November? That would be they don't go out. No, me, me uh, Patrick, uh, my brother was born on, on St. Martin's night. And my Granny Davis, she, she got really upset over it because they called him Pat. And she said, what are you thinking of? He was born on St. Martin's night and you called him Pat. And she never forgave him for it. Never forgave him. That was the 10th of November? Or the yeah. 11th? 10th? Yeah. He was born St. Patrick's Night. Or Martin Night. Or St. Pat, St. Martin's Night. Yeah. But I, I have a feeling my father was out fishing that night too. Jeez, it's worse again. I think he was. <laughs> Lads in Cornwall and other parts. I know there was an awful big row. There's an awful big row over it. You wouldn't have to go that night. Well, maybe he wasn't there, but I know, I know there's a row over Pat because my poor Granny Davis, she, she. And do you ever remember them killing the cock or killing the hen on that night? Eating chicken or Oh goose? yeah, my mother mother my mother kept hens in the in the garden. She had a thing out there yeah. with, with oh. hens. And on Sunday morning, if she hadn't got hunting for her dinner, she'd go out and she'd kill the hen, skin it, and bring it in, wash it and throw it in the oven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you ever remember them killing oh, in some parts of the country now? Maybe North West Wexford and certainly over in the West, uh, they'd kill a cock on St. Mark, cock or a hen, they'd always have some on St. Martin's night or St. Martin's Eve. Did you, did you have that? No, no, I never remember anything like that. And it's no. sprink, and it's sprinkled the blood and it marked the blood on the cross and the fire. Oh, and no, like I, I, I know, I, I never no. remember anything no. like that. No, no, no. 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 You remember the Mabel Shear though? Don't oh, you? I remember that. Yeah. Where Mab- was Mabel Shear? Mabel used to be um, down there. Um, I crossed in the bo- wood at the river there, opposite Dunbar's. Mm-hmm. We used to be in there. Yeah. The ma- with the May bush. Did you decorate it? Oh, yeah, yeah. We used to decorate it, yeah. I got an awful fall one night too. I was being clever and I decided to, to climb the tree. We had done the May bush and everything was going all right. And of course, I thought myself a big fella now. I'm going to. I, and then the dar made to go to the top of the tree. So I went to the top of the tree. Fell down now, fit into a bunch of nettles. Oh, oh, I was in some state. Had to get the doctor. Did you? I was covered in nettles things. Oh, I me. fell right into the bunch of nettles. How old were you? I'd say it was maybe seven or eight. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. 
Yeah, and the, the, the main bush you used the forest bushes, yeah? Yeah, yes. Yeah. You used to be great times so with them. Mm. You used to have great... Mm. Would you, have any children do it? Well, all... Now, the, see, in the River Chapel, there'd be Nancy Bulger and Madge Jolly, and there'd be Mary Sinnott, Mary Byrne now, Mary Sinnott, and there'd be... Michal Kelly, uh, Peter Sheen, and Tom McGuire. That group was always together. That group, that now what I've said, we were always together. When you seen one, you seen them all. And we used to all be around the Maybush. We used to have some great things. But in the River Chapel, Every one of them looked out for everyone else. They were the greatest crowd of people. We were only young, but you were there for them and they were there for you. We used to gather at Daly's Corner every day after school. And we'd lay out what we were going to do that night. And some of us in a lot of mischief. Some was a lot of mischief. Because we'd probably end up at, up in, in uh, the Church of Ireland's place, what's yeah. it call them, up the back road, in the orchard, taking the apples. And we'd come across the fields, back down home, yeah. bags of apples. Taking apples. Yeah. And another... <laughs> My it was wrong what we'd done. Mrs. Daly, she was an old person, an old woman. She was partly blind. She owned the shop in the corner. And she, what we'd done was, we used to get two pence piece and cover with silver paper and make it into two shillings. And we'd go in then and we'd get a fag each and, two, and, about, and uh, three matches for the two shillings, but it wasn't, it was a penny. Because the penny was the same size as the two shillings. And she was like that. But once she seen the silver paper, she thought it was two shillings. We'd done that several times. We used to come out then. We all got one fag each, that's what we bought. We, she used to sell a fag. And she'd give you a match with it. <laughs> but the two shillings, We'd all get one, and we'd all come out then, stand outside or sit on the wall across at the river and smoke the fag. And you own each other? Yeah. Yeah. We, we probably weren't even 12 years of age. But nobody ever chastised us. I know. But we done that, we done that for our Mr. Daly umpteen times. Umpteen times we done that, give her two shillings. They were a penny with silver paper in it. I'm sure the guilt has ate away at you all your life, has it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It has. Yeah. It's still in the back of your mind. Oh, yeah, it's always there. It's always there. I can still see her face. Yeah. You know, I can still see her face. Ah, yeah. But uh, she sold penny sweets, halfpenny sweets. You know, you'd go in and buy a sweet off of her. Um, she wasn't a bad old creator. Yeah, I know. You know? Come here to me as well. I want to lend this now because we're talking to Maybush and put it to Maybush. It's lovely that you did it because it was done in about a yard as well. Did you go on uh, uh, visiting? Oh God, yeah. That was the greatest night of all. Yeah. That was the greatest night of all. And the best place to go for the visit was up to Mrs. Richards. Because she always gave you some. You come out, maybe she'd have baked the cakes, little cakes, there'd be an apple, there'd be an orange, and she'd have one for you. She was a great woman, that old, oh, oh, oh Mr. Richards. She was a marvellous woman. Wow. And you go out, little, little, was, was it the same gang of you? Oh, the same gang. Yeah. Same gang. Went up, yeah. Go to Art of Mine. Always yeah. went to Mr. Richards first. Yeah. And then we'd do probably a couple of houses on our way down. Sometimes you couldn't get into them. Yeah. 
and then uh, the last amen went around River Chapel. Okay. Done all the houses. Right. And then uh, before we went home, uh, we'd sit on the wall and we'd have a look at the bag to see what we got. Oh, sure. See, did you get more than me? Yeah. <laughs> and you, did you wear a little visor on your face? Oh, God, yeah. You used to buy the visards. You buy a visard? You used to buy a visard, yeah. Did you make one up of a little cornflakes box or another? So no, well, I suppose we probably did at times, but the thing was, uh, in most of the cases, the visit that you had this year, you had it next year as well, well yes. because you put it away. Now, by any chance, would you have any of your visitors surviving now? I wouldn't think so. And what kind of visitor was it? Huh? Was it plastic or rubber? <coughs> well, the ones that you buy, now, you didn't buy them too often, but if you bought one, it would be like a, a hard cardboard. Hard cardboard. Mm. Uh, and you'd all have a visitor on you? You'd all have a visitor on. And you'd all be dressed up. In different clothes. <coughs> old clothes. Old clothes, yeah. yeah. Probably uh, dress belong to your granny down to the floor and you know that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. You'd be dressed up as that. Hump on your back? Yeah. Oh yeah, you'd, 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 you'd great times really. And how old were you when you were going out on the visit? Well, I'd say that I probably started when I was about six. Is that young? Yeah. So that was 1934 you were born? Yeah. So 1940? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Because I was very tall. I mean, I, I, I was, when I was 12, I think I was five foot four. Oh, okay. Because they used to give out to me uh, because they couldn't get close to fit me. Yeah. In, in that, in price range, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, Peter Sheen was tall as well. Nancy Bulger was, Nancy is still about the same as me. Now, Nancy is 80, Nine. Uh, she's uh, Mary Bourne is God help her, she's got Alzheimer's. She hasn't been out of bed for five years. Yeah, she lives up on the top of uh, Brickyard Hill. Yeah. Bourne. Yeah. Same age as me, her birthday was the week before mine. And uh, Madge Jolly, she died very young, really. But we were all tall. We weren't. None of us were small. Yeah, yeah. And when when you go out, would you at the age? Would you? Was there called cannon given out that night? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, the thing was, you were acting the gum all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and the lads that be with us, they'd be uh, edging us on. Yeah, you yeah. know, and they say, "Go and do this. Don't do that." Like you so know, you, you'd be a bit of different that night too, wasn't it? Oh God, yeah. Always different. Yeah. What kind of different? Would you, yeah. would you rob gates? No, well, the thing was, the biggest event we done in the end was knocking the door and running. Oh yeah. And Good hiding sense. and hiding and looking and see yeah. if they've come out. Yeah, yeah. Did you just pick up heads of cabbage and throw them? Oh, door? we done all that. Did we you? Done, you done all that? Yeah, we done all that. Yeah. You used to go into the gardens and we done a lot of mischief. Yeah. But it was innocent mischief. You know, you wouldn't destroy anything. You know. Not like what they're doing now. I know, I know. You know? But it was a great crowd. And, and they're all gone. There's only myself and Nancy Bulger and, Madge, and uh, Mary Bourne left. Out of all of them. They're all dead. Every one of them. Are, the, are the original local natives, if you want to call them that in court, under the 18 underground now? Oh, just nobody. Nobody. The only ones now to stand there. Well, there's nobody in my my age group. Really, May Chambers now she's ninety. All right, May is, but uh, other than that, there's nobody in my age group. At all, they're all gone. So. Yeah. And as soon as this. Pandemic yoke is over, the sooner the better, so as I can get back out onto my routine. Because <coughs> I played cards five nights a week. Good woman. Used to go all over. Yeah, you're driving the still. Ballygarrett, Ballygarrett stopped though all of a sudden. I don't know what happened there. Yeah. And Ballycanew and Kyle Nairn and River Chapel and Gory. Brilliant. Went to them all. I'll be back. Give, give it now, give it a short one time, it'll be back again. Well, I hope so. I hope so because 
I do miss I do miss the cards, and then I run the Laho as well for the parish. And you see, I don't do that anymore. It's on the road two days a week with that, yeah. the Laho, and I don't do that. So I'm a little bit tired at the moment, yeah. and I'm getting frustrated. <laughs> You'll be grand. You're getting there. You got your vaccine now, have you? Uh, yeah. yeah, you don't yeah, I got that. Yeah, be, yeah. No, I got that uh, in uh, April. Good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Good. Come here, I better let you go because we've been talking for nearly two hours. So uh, I've got six minutes left to me, Cara. It's lovely to meet you, lovely to talk to you, to listen to you. Same to you. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, all our nonsense now. <laughs> I, I hope nobody else is going to be looking at this. Oh, no, I'll see that, I promise you. <laughs> 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 Good luck. I think if I lay dying in some land Where Ireland is no more than just a name My soul would travel back to find the strand from whence it came I'd see the harbour in the evening light The old men staring at some distant ship the fishing boats they fasten right and left beside the slip. The sea rack lying on the windswept.